So uh, five years ago on TED stage, Jeffrey West shared a great story about the race between innovation and growth. As we human society keeps growing exponentially, we are approaching the collapse of this society. And then a major innovation takes place, and we go over again, approaching the next collapse. To sustain growth and avoid collapse, we have to innovate faster and faster. Five years passed, we have experienced a lot of terrible things, uh, challenges we never thought before, things that might destroy us. But we also witnessed a lot of great innovations. Those innovations are the seeds of our future. We humans are creative, so we never stop inventing things. But the question is, how can we keep innovating faster and faster? Can we build a place to accelerate innovation? How can we make sure our organization will be robust and agile to any unknown challenges? Five years ago, there's a university born with a lot of new concept, trying to answer those questions. I have been with this university for uh, almost three years, and the experience I had there is incredible. It changed my concept about how university should be like and how we become innovative. So I think the design of this university is a great idea worth sharing. Imagine a university without departments where you are not labeled by your degrees or your past experience, but a set of dynamic talents of yours. Imagine a university's campus designed in a Silicon Valley st uh, style, where you just bump into random people on a daily basis, where the office of a quantum physics is next to the office of an architect sitting next to an engineer's office. Uh, imagine most of the classrooms can be transformed into studios, workshops, project room, discussion room, instantly. And whenever you take a random walk at the campus, you find markers and whiteboard spaces everywhere. So this is SUTD. Everything here is about collaboration and creativity. Everyone is encouraged to work with diverse groups, to try with rapid innovation, to take on greater challenges, to try to impact the world in different ways. And all the infrastructure and supporting system is trying to enable the minimum friction in this highly meshed network. So uh, how do we know after all these efforts uh, the design of this university works as we expected? Are we accelerating innovation effectively? Are we become more robust and agile towards uh, uh, challenges? Can we even quantify those metrics? To answer this, I created the SUTD hologram. It's a platform uh, visualizing the research ecosystem in SUTD. With the data we have, I created a dynamic model of all the meaningful collaborations that had happened in SUTD. So let's take a look. This is SUTD three years ago. Blue dots are people. It could be anyone, uh, professors, PhD students, technicians. And the green dots are things that have been working together. Let's zoom in and take a look. For example, this is a group of uh, professor and PhD students teaching introduction to design. And this is a project creating smart devices for disabled people with two professors and two researchers. Let's see how the map of uh, collaboration evolves in three years' time. People get moved too close to each other because of new publications, courses, projects, etc., etc. And every month, we are getting data about new kinds of collaborations. New people join in, creating this tension of expansion. So you see this like a heartbeat of the network. And then you see people moving in groups. There's people who love to work with people with the same background. There's people who love to work with people with diverse uh, background. And you see people working, uh, people working in well-known re well research clusters like uh, aerodynamics and, uh, and material science. And you also see emerging new clusters of research focus like cybersecurity and urban solution. Clusters also moves because new collaborations from the outside. And people, especially people in the center area, continues to move, filling the empty space between clusters. So if I bet, uh, I bet if I do this for traditional universities, you will see a lot more isolated islands and fewer connections. Actually, I did a similar project uh, on one of our one of our research center with a research center in a, a traditional university. Our collaboration network is far more dynamic and connected. 
So, uh, I want to share two stories of innovation here. This is 2014, Professor Mohan met Professor Rajesh in IDC Summit. Uh, in SUTD, we have a lot of events like this where you share your research interest and you have a quick one-to-one -one speed dating. So, what are you working on? Professor Mohan asked. I do robotics. I study dengue fever. So I, I imagine there's like three seconds of awkward silences. <laughs> <laughs> but, they, but they began to talk. They began to try to help each other understand what they're doing, uh, pitch ideas from their own domain, and soon they come up with a, with a great idea. So uh, they said, how about let's make a mosquito uh, robotic detector? So it attracts mosquito, take a picture of it, kills it, and I identify if this is a mosquito with uh, dengue virus. If hundreds of those, uh, those robots got like, deployed over a region, it could be helped to identify areas with high risk of dengue fever. So they quickly get funded by the research center, and they build the prototype, and they come to, uh, went to see the government agency with their solutions, and the government agency was surprised, because this is exactly what they need. Usually, they, they identify areas of high risk of dengue fever by the actual number of report sickness. Now they can do this estimation without somebody getting sick. Um, as the project goes on, more collaborations between Mohan and Rajesh uh, shows up. A study shows that disruptive innovation often comes when people have a very deep knowledge of one domain, uh, one domain and then get suddenly inspired from completely outsiders. So that's why in SUTD, we encourage you to go deep in your domain, but also open to outside voices. The second story is about things sell out, challenges. Same year, a sponsor come to us and say, hey, can you guys make a spider swarm of spider robot like this? You should be able to move fast and collaborate. Wow. But we take the challenges, and we look around and say, great, we have uh, people doing swarm control, people doing robotic transforming, and people doing nano adhesive uh, materials, people doing space mapping and positioning, and et cetera, et cetera. All we need to do is just bring those talents to together, right? But you know how hard it is to bring like, people with so much diverse in their specialties to work together. But we have a professor who has specialized in engineering project management, has many years doing like, very diverse and large uh, uh, industrial projects. And so, it's a great solution. I'm also involved in this project in early stage uh, de uh, design. So we work as a team towards this single but very complex challenges. With everybody contributing their own unique talents, we move in a very fast pace. We made hundreds of prototypes, hundreds of iter iterations. We also developed many innovative solutions and concepts, such as the first uh, three-dimensional man magnetic positioning system, the first theory on minimal number of agents to control a swarm. The first robotic uh, commercial product that has decentralized the swarm technology. Uh, we made the smallest rolling robot in the world, and soon you will be able to climb walls. Uh, never mind. I, I expect there's claps, but never mind. <laughs> and we even created an uh, educational version of this robot. So all the students learning engineering uh, development and project engineering can just break it, modify it, try, try their own ideas on it. Their inspiring solutions sometimes are the great source of, for this project. So it's hard to imagine such in-depth collaborations happened in a traditional university where you have to work out all the logistics between seven different departments and between research, education, and all the supply chain of manuf uh, manufacturing. Innovation sometimes comes out of your creative use of unlimited resources. Enabling this kind of reconfiguration is our core value. It makes us more robust and agile towards unknown challenges. So is SCTD the best place for innovation? Frankly, I have to say it's too early to tell. <clears throat> But I know this is a university that is very, very unique, and it has, it has achieved enormous impact in a, such a short time. It is a university open to change, and we are keep improving it with our passion and scientific rigor. 
With the data we gathered, for the first time, we'll be able to see the full picture of all the collaborations in our university and how it goes over time. For the first time, we'll be asked some very important fundamental questions about innovation. Why people with different backgrounds should work together? How do you measure the impact of collaboration? How do you measure the correlation between fundings and innovation? What's in the empty space in the network? Can we use the dynamic of this network to forecast the next innovation? Can we even encourage the next innovation? I think by answering these questions, we'll be able to accelerate innovation in a systematic way. And only in this way, we humans will get greater confidence sustaining our goals and avoid collapse. Thank you.